Yo, what's up? It's Jay Dennis with the Jay Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, January 28th, 2020. 2020. New decade. Last podcast of the first month of the first year of the new decade. This is a landmark episode, guys. I think. They're all landmark episodes. You know why? Because podcasting is going to be one of the very few things that I'll probably be doing to share stuff because my social media usage is basically gone now. My desire for it has left all that need, even though mine was probably at a lower threshold because I've never really been much of a people pleaser or an attention whore. Don't 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 laugh. It's true about the attention whore part. Um, but you know, when you're in your late teens, early twenties, back in the early twenty tens, um, yeah, you're gonna have some uh, immaturity and desire to be Facebook famous or Instagram or YouTube. Obviously, I still wouldn't mind a lot more subscribers on YouTube, you know, more views on my videos or listens to my podcast, you know, that would be awesome, but I'm not really staking my mental health or my stuff uh, or my uh, success or my, my value on it because as it stood for a while, it's just something I do for fun. You know, I only do it so often and, you know, I do try to keep these podcasts consistent, but yeah, it's just, it's not my main thing, and I'm not really too stressed about it, so the work definitely reflects that sentiment, um, but anyway, so it's nine o'clock, I'm on, my way, I'm on my way to my office, yeah, that's right, I had a little bit of a late start there, um, but oddly enough, the past two mornings, I've actually woken up early and on time, um, but yeah, wait, hold on a sec. That was ballsy. This guy just... Hold on a sec. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm on my way to the office uh, this particular week of my 12-week year, week four, which is like pretty much the end of January and then like one day of February. Um, it's been has been good went to the gym, did my 5x5 five five workouts on Sunday. Yesterday I said, fuck it, I'm going to go run a mile. Jesus, why does this person keep getting pulled over? Are they getting escorted or something? Um, and then yesterday I went in and did some cardio and just some arms. I, I, I tried some new... Uh, bicep curl movement variations that I learned yesterday that are supposed to give you a sick pump and they did um so my biceps are sore feels good and uh yesterday I'm basically doing the uh no nap challenge this week uh where during my lunch hour I don't feel the need to take like a 20 minute power nap to uh, recharge. And uh, yeah, yesterday it only happened for like five, 10 minutes. I was like taking my, taking my lunch break and I was watching this long YouTube video and I dozed off for a couple minutes, but then I woke up like hyper alert and I was like, Oh, okay, let's actually stay awake now. Let's go to the gym. And I basically for the most part lived my ideal schedule yesterday where I go to the gym during my lunch hour to get that second wave of energy throughout uh, for the rest of the day. And then by the time my wife and I are watching The Bachelor at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I'm getting fucking sleepy. So I think the quality of sleep goes up if you don't take a nap during the day. The, 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 the dumbass logic that myself and maybe other people have used is, oh, well, if I take a small... And this is like on the weekends too. Oh, well, if I take a small nap during the day... I will need to sleep as much overnight and I can get up easier early. It's like, no. That's probably not how it works. 
Okay, I'm not saying. Hold on a sec. This is the uh, hold on a sec. This is the hold on a second podcast. Um, you can't catch up on sleep, and you can't like pay sleep forward. And again, I'm not saying that naps are necessarily a bad thing, but like to do it every day, I don't know if that's uh, wise until maybe you're a little older and your schedule calls for it. But when you're young and you're spry and you need to put in as many productive hours as you can that are spiritually and financially productive, um, then yeah. Um, it's probably best to just wake up and go to bed at the same time every day and just work through it. And eventually your body adapts to it. Because my body is adapted to uh, fucking taking naps. It's like, nah, dude, you're not a baby. You don't need that. You don't need that shit. Um, what else is going on? I'm uh, listening to a new audiobook because apparently I can't focus on just one book at a time. I'm like reading a PDF downloaded file version of Think and Grow Rich, which is like a classic book. I'm like reading that on my laptop every morning. And then I also have a hardcover book called Presence that I got in Seattle as a gift. And I'm a little bit ways through that. And now I'm listening to an audiobook on YouTube of the Dave, Dave Mustaine book. It's called Mustaine. <gasps> Excuse me. Wow. Wow. Excuse me. Um, and I'm excited about it. I'm pretty thrilled. Probably can't tell because this is a kind of a low energy podcast at this point. But I'm I'm excited. I'm about like 20 minutes into it. And, you know, it's not, he hasn't fully talked about Metallica or Megadeth or any of that yet. He's talking about, like, his early childhood and everything, but, like, it's fascinating. You know, it's like a autobiography, it seems. And Dave Mustaine is an interesting character to me, and he's a brilliant musician. You know, he's a metal icon. So to hear his story is awesome. And, you know, when I look at my own life... I think shit you know you see all these rock stars and their stories and they talk about how from like yeah I knew back in high school this is what I was gonna do and they have all these stories about like I guess not going to college and just touring and living the dream and struggling sleeping on floors eating out of trash cans early on until they hit it big and but they, that, that passion was always there and I compare it to my own life where I feel like I've been alligator arming it for so long, but, and there was, like, always this expectation of, like, oh, if I don't do this before I'm 30, I'm fucked, like, if, if I'm in my 30s and I'm not doing music, then I'll be too old to do it, and I'm like, nah, dude, you give yourself a, uh, five to eight year buffer, because of, because of, uh, baby face, I don't have a baby face, but I look a couple years younger than I actually am, so, that helps, but, I don't know, man, uh, from what I've witnessed on the My- during the MySpace days, um, when I did, when I was in a band and I saw local bands coming up and like just the advent of social media and everything, and it's probably different now. Probably changed a little bit, but I think a lot of these bands that hit it big before they were like 21, like Attack Attack or whoever else, a lot of these bands that hit it big when they were super young, they weren't mature enough to keep it together. So, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world that I start hardcore pursuing, you know, a Raptor Riot album and a tour and other stuff like that when I'm a little older and more mature. So, I don't think age plays a massive role in this. But, kind of the way that I just described my view on what I want to do with music and Raptor Riot and everything like that. I will be doing the same thing on my YouTube channel. I'm uh, thinking up some new video ideas. I write them down. I put them on like a note on on my phone. 
I have a bunch of video ideas and I want to get the YouTube channel more active again. So I'm just musing to you guys right now of what's going on. I know there's only a handful of listeners that I have, but that, like, I, I kind of don't mind that right now. I don't mind that it's kind of like a hidden underground gem because I'm not a very public figure by any means. Again, I've basically erased myself off of social media and I'm mostly working on my business and spending time with my family at home. So I'm not really putting myself out there too much. And, you know, there's not really not too many downsides to that because my job is to put myself out there and make commission. <laughs> so all that to say, with In Flames as the soundtrack and a couple of other bands that I've got going on listening to, I will be hopefully putting up some new videos here in the next couple of months. I'm not saying the next YouTube video is going to be in March. I'm saying like the the wheels are spinning again and I want to get something up really soon. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. If you want to support it, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube's become a fucking joke too with regards to its algorithm and how you, you have to basically beg for likes and shit. Like, fuck that. I'm not doing any of that. I don't care if I can't run ads on this thing because I cuss. Like, I, I, I really don't give a shit. Like, I'm not trying to make money off YouTube. I do this for fun. Same thing with this podcast. This podcast gives me an outlet to just fucking vent. Hopefully in a productive way. Like, I don't, I don't want to weigh you down with my bullshit. If anything, I want to help build you up and inspire you. So you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, also go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com. Download the Sabotage GP. It's $2.99. It's pretty much all the Raptor Riot music you can get right now. Or go to the Raptor Riot a playlist on my YouTube channel to listen to the Holy P for free and the uh, song Broke Ass. Yo, what's up? It's the January 23rd, 2020. Recording a podcast clip at a time that I probably never have before. 1 o'clock p.m.? What the fuck? Yeah. Um, with regards to my In Flames playlist, the only albums I haven't gotten through yet with adding a couple tracks that are my favorite to this playlist. Uh, just three albums, if we don't count the albums that don't have Anders on them. I'm, again, I'm only doing Anders albums. Uh, it's just three albums. It's Sense of Purpose, Sounds of a Playground Fading, and Siren Charms. So 2008, 2011, 2014. Now, last week I did listen to Sounds of a Playground and Siren Charms all the way through. But that was just the initial listen. I know there'll be a couple tracks on both of those albums. But I still haven't listened to Sense of Purpose entirely without interruption. That's an album that since it came out and people had like... People actually had like Alias or Mirror's Truth as their MySpace song. I never really gave this album a full... Shake. I mean, maybe I had it on my iPod and I tried to get through it. I think I actually did have this album on my iPod Nano that I got senior year of high school. So maybe I have tried it. I remember, of course, Mirror's Truth being a good song. Maybe Delights and Anger and Move Through Me being good songs. But I'm going to, again, go through this those albums again and add them. But I got all the other albums on there. Uh, let me see where I'm at with number of tracks. This is, I know this is like high quality podcast material right here. And it doesn't fucking tell you how many tracks there are on your playlist. Okay, thanks a lot. But it's, so far it's two hours worth of In Flames music. Okay. Probably about 30 odd tracks maybe. Um, but anyway. What's going on? Ooh, Yeah. Yeah, I come home for lunch, and I walk my dogs. Why did I want to record this clip? Oh, yeah, because on the last podcast, I talked a little bit about how I call people. Sometimes I troll them, depending on the nature of the company or whatever, but oftentimes I'm cordial and just normal, okay? <laughs> just normal. Um, but, you know, a couple times a month, I probably call a couple of companies and tell them, tell them to remove me off their mailing list because I don't like getting mail 
I don't want clutter and shit in my house, and I don't want that extra task of having to fucking rip something up and put it in the shredder. Like, it's an extra task I don't want to deal with. And that's part of what minimalists and organized people do. They deal with their mail right away. So the less I have to deal with, the better. I don't get depressed if I don't get mail that day. And I don't order shit off Amazon or off the internet that frequently. So I'm not, like, expecting packages half the time. So mail is not an exciting thing for me. I'm not expecting anything. Um, but somebody rang on my doorbell. I looked through the camera. I tried to respond to them, but it didn't register because I was on the phone with somebody at the same time. So after walking the dogs, oh, during my walk with the dogs, I was I walked past a couple of guys that were clearly... Uh, political canvassers and I'm like oh I think one of those guys was the one that knocked on my door and you know sometimes I go door to door to prospect for people to find new clients like I got nothing against people to go door to door it's a it's not an easy thing to do but some people just suck at it I don't know how these guys are but they didn't follow the basic rule in fact most of the people that knock on my door and I I I find the footage on my camera they don't follow the basic rule of give the person that's answering the door some fucking space they're like way too close to the door so that when I answer they're like less than three feet away from me and yeah there's a screen between us because I have a screen door also so that way the cats and the dogs don't get out um, but the rule is especially if you're a guy or a bigger person like back up like back up at least six feet it, it, it makes the person because you're answering the door for a stranger like it makes the person that's answering the door feel less threatened and you don't face them directly you don't square up to them you actually face them at an angle and yes this is stuff that I learned from my mentor and it's stuff that I've actually practiced in real life and it's actually yielded less doors closed in my face people being you know nice to me you know, not being short. There's always going to be those people that just immediately, before you even get the first word out, close the door and say not interested. It's like, then why'd you open the door? All I said, all I did was say my name. I didn't say who I was with or what I was looking to do. When I when I knock on a door, I'm just trying to get an appointment. I'm not selling anything. Um, but anyway, no. So these guys were from Pete Buttigieg's campaign. And as you heard me talk on the last podcast, I was annoyed how I couldn't get the fuck off of these Tom Steyer mailers. But at least with the Mayor Pete one, and again, I fucking hate Pete Buttigieg. He's a, I can't say he's a cocksucker because that's a, that would be a, that would be a, because he's gay. I have nothing, I have nothing against him being gay, obviously. It's just, I don't like the guy. He's shady. He doesn't stand for anything. And Medicare for those that want it? Go fuck yourself. This whole half-moderate approach doesn't fucking work. You have no political experience. You, you, you were the mayor over a racist... I, I, I can't get into this shit right now, but anyway. I don't like him. He is by far my least favorite candidate. I don't like him at all. Like, if... God forbid he actually won the nomination. I'd have a very hard time voting for him. Obviously, I would never vote for Agent Orange, but I'd have a hard time going to the polls to vote for the Democratic nominee if it was Pete Buttigieg or... That's pretty much it. You know... Okay, fine. Fuck it. Let's go through... Oh, well, I'll, I'll do that in a second. But yeah, but the person was nice enough to actually leave their, their number, I guess... So I called the number, I went to a voicemail, and I said, Hi, you don't have to return this call, but please remove my address from your 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 door knocking list. You know, I was I was polite, but I just basically said I'm not interested, I have no desire for a follow up. Just please remove my thing. And honestly, when people do that to me, and it's only happened like once or twice in the two years I've been doing what I do. One and one and a half years rather. I'm in my second year, but it hasn't been two years yet. Um, I just say, fuck it and move on. I don't bother them. I just say, okay, if you want to not be on a mailing list or not be on a whatever, I just oblige. And 
most people that I call and do that for anyway, they just say, okay. Like, they just, yeah. I don't know how many calls they get like that. I know that I'm very different. I kind of prioritize things weirdly. Like, some of the shit that I get annoyed by, most people are just probably whatever about. But it's like, no, I don't want, I don't want bullshit mail. I'm careful about the amount of emails I have coming in and who they're coming from. So whatever. But yeah, so had no interest in this Pete Buttigieg thing. You know, there was a fucking sticky note left on my no- on my door like two weeks ago from the same group. No phone number, but, you know, the same campaign. And I was like, shit, I don't, I don't want this crap on my door. I don't want this in my house. So, yeah, I'm going to ask them to skip. Obviously, I, by a large margin, large margin, heavily prefer... Bernie Sanders. I voted for him in the primary of 2016, and I'm voting for him again this year. He's he's the candidate we all deserve. He's the shit. He's an actual populist that's a good person. Um, but then a very far second place would be Elizabeth Warren, because she's the other progressive, but she seems wishy-washy and weak at times, but I know that she's not a slouch about a lot of stuff and she's very smart and she has plans for shit so she's a you know second place and then after that I don't fucking know I used to love Joe Biden because I thought he was a good vice president I thought he complimented Barack Obama pretty well but I don't want him as the fucking candidate he sucks he's got no charisma he's not the man he once was and you know he doesn't have the best voting record either so I don't want fucking Joe Biden that would be like putting Hillary up again Except at least Hillary can, like, talk for a couple minutes without having a gaffe. And then who else do we have? I've already talked about Pete Buttigieg. He fucking sucks. He's the worst. He has the most, again, not not because he's gay or a hate crime, but he literally has the most punchable face of all time. He has the most punchable face I've ever seen. He looks like a fucking who. And he's got a dumbass haircut, almost as bad as Marco Rubio. And in the most non-sexual way, he can go fuck himself. I hate. I, I can't stand him. He is the worst. In terms of substance and just the way he talks and just the fact that he takes corporate PAC money. Like, go fuck yourself, you hoity-toity disgrace to the Democratic Party, which the party itself is already pretty disgraced by all these corporatists. Progressives are better. Uh, and then who else do we have? Really nobody else worth mentioning. I've talked about Tom Steyer. Uh, He's the better billionaire between him and Michael Bloomberg. Michael Bloomberg is a cunt. I don't like him at all. Obviously, they're both better billionaires than Donald Trump, but I don't want either of those cocksuckers being the the nominee because they think they can buy their way to the presidency. Like, go fuck yourself with your stop and frisk and with your... You know, you got a great... You know, Bloomberg is a great, like, news site. It is. Like, it's not all bad. But no, you shouldn't be the president. Go fuck yourself. I'm, I'm like, not trying to burn bridges here, but go fuck yourself. And then what's, who's left? Tulsi Gabbard and Amy Klobuchar? Yeah. Fucking jokes. Fucking corporate Democrat hacks. Tulsi Gabbard, who voted present at the impeachment vote. And if you got, you know, a couple of Trump surrogates and, like, Republicans liking you that are Trump supporters, then... Uh, I don't know, man. There's just something that I can't trust about that. And, again, they're kind of irrelevant at this point. So, I'm hoping it comes down to Bernie, Sanders, and Biden. That's obviously who it's going to be. They're the the three leading contenders. But, obviously, Bernie's leading, and he's got the best bet to win. Let's just hope the DNC doesn't fuck him over the way they did in 2016. Yo, what's up? It's Sunday, January 26th, 2020. Just after 4.30 p.m. And I'm not going to use the uh, black asshole inside joke anymore because I'm getting a lot of heat for that. Getting private messages up the ass about that. You know, it's just in reference to a 2000s Newgrounds video from back in the day. Professor uh, Layton and the malignant tumor You know, just a weird flash series of just random-ass videos. 
And if it, none of that stuff sounded like, if everything in that sentence sounded foreign to you, then, then obviously you have a very shallow ability to retain context and just immediately go off the handle when I clearly state that four, no, four, 430, you black asshole. Ha <laughs> ha. When only like a handful of people in the world will know what that means. Like even if you type that in on Google, the odds of it pulling up the right video are super low. So anyway, I'm going to the gym because I'm feeling I'm feeling a little frisky today, feeling a little extra productive because quite frankly, my week three of my 12 week year was not one of my better weeks. Um, I started it off well by booking appointments and getting some productive victories in there, but uh, yeah, there's some bad habits during the week that I need to squash in order for me to live and abide by my ideal schedule more effectively, thus putting in more intentional hours that result in more of my leading indicators being successful, such as income, number of clients, number of appointments leading to applications, everything like that. But, you know, today, you know, my wife and I had planned on going snowshoeing, but a storm came in. Um, so we ended up doing some other stuff this morning. So instead of going grocery shopping and going to church later in the day, early evening, we did it all in the morning. I'm like, hey, all that stuff that we usually do Sunday night, we got it done in the morning. Holy shit, this opens up the rest of the day to do stuff because grocery shopping is just kind of one of those daunting tasks that you want to just get done out of the way. Um, and yeah, even though honestly, I'm not a believer myself, Sometimes it's nice to go at night. Most of the time I prefer to go in the morning. Um, So we went to Trader Joe's. We got these, you know, aside from other groceries, we got these plant-based burgers. You know, if you go to any grocery store, there's a high chance these days they're going to be selling these pre-packaged, they look like raw beef patties. I'm not talking about like Morningstar or any of that, that frozen stuff. I'm talking about, like, it's, like, refrigerated. And they, they, they look like raw beef patties, but they're plant-based because, you know, they got pea protein and the, they get the color from the beets that are they're also made with as well. And they're pre-packaged, and, you know, they got, like, that cold, soft texture that you get with, like, uncooked raw meat, raw beef. And we were like, screw it. Trader Joe's is selling it. You know, it's two patties for $5, you know, might seem like a little like we're splurging there, but like screw it, let's try it. Let's have burgers and uh, sweet potato fries for lunch. Vegan burgers, and holy shit, that was easily one of the best veggie burgers I've ever had. And to boot, it was actually vegan. There was no egg or milk products in it. What Morningstar and a couple of other brands do wrong is they say. Oh yeah, 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 it's vegetarian, but I, I don't know. I guess uh, if what my wife if what my wife says is true, I guess vegetarians include egg in their diet. But vegetarian means you don't eat like animal meat products, and this is going to be hotly debated, much like my four thirty a black asshole comment. But eggs are not dairy; eggs are meat. They are meat. Dairy means it comes from a cow's milk. Last time I checked, chicken, <laughs> chickens lay eggs. Eggs are meat. They're not dairy, okay? So to say that eggs are vegetarian is incorrect because eggs are meat. Um, but yeah, so this one is completely 100% vegan. And damn it, it tasted so damn good. It tasted like a medium rare burger. Now, I'm, I'm way past the point now where I'm, I'm no longer bothered by the whole mm, texture. Like, I'm not bothered by that. Like, I don't care if almond cheese or any of these other, you know, pseudo cheeses have a weird texture. Like, I'm, I'm fine. Like, you know, there's a lot of vegan food out there these days that still tastes amazing. Like, yeah, if you, of course most people that try vegan food or they go in to try almond milk or... Soy cheese or the court, they're gonna go, they're gonna go in with a stank face anyway. So, like, they're already going in with like a uh, self fulfilling prophecy that it's gonna taste like shit and therefore it's not worth it. 
Now, without being a total nerd about it, I can say food is first and foremost for nourishment and then for pleasure. Whereas if we just eat food purely for gluttony, this is why cancer and heart disease are the leading and are in stroke are the leading causes of death in America because we're all a gluttonous culture. And I haven't fully grown out of that yet. <laughs> but all that to say is these days it's a lot easier to be vegan. And I would just recommend at least trying it a couple days a week or at least cutting back the animal products you eat and see how much better you feel. And at some point we're not going to have a choice because it's the number one cause of uh, climate change right now. So anyway, it's a weird segue, but it's it's devastating to hear what happened to Kobe Bryant and his daughter and everybody else who was in that helicopter. It's terrible news. I really like the guy. And I found it really weird that last night they were talking about how LeBron James just surpassed him in, like, all-time point scoring. So LeBron James is now, like, the third highest. He, I guess he's behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Carl uh, Malone. He's still got a couple thousand to go to surpass those guys, and he probably has a couple years left in him, so you never know. And the following morning, or following day, it's reported that Kobe Bryant died. What the hell? What the hell? That really sucks. He was one of the greatest players of all time. And he was a fucking legend. Like, it's just, it's, it's devastating. Um, so, yeah, that really sucks. Um, anyway, weird segue again. So, back to my productive day. Um, yeah, so we went to Home Depot yesterday. I got some uh, pictures that I got for Christmas. I got them hung up. And... Um, When my wife's father, my father-in-law, came down last October, he was helping me fix a gate that I have. And um, we ran out of daylight by the time we were almost done. And um, he's like, this is how you fix the rest of it. You have the tools needed. This is what you do. This is how you do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. My dumbass didn't get it done for the last three months. So I still had a shoddy gate going. I was like, hey, while we're at Home Depot and I'm buying this shit, I may as well buy the appropriate uh, bolt necessary to uh, complete this project. And it took me all of like 15, 10, 15 minutes to finish it. And then I remembered the instructions he gave me. I got it done. It's all good now. Oh my Jesus, I waited all this time to do this. And let me tell you something, a fucking plug-in power drill, so much more powerful than a cordless one. Holy shit, or a ba- battery-powered one, yeah. It's fucking awesome. Oh, <laughs> it's fucking awesome. And I'm actually parked at the restaurant that I work at. And, like, I'm sitting up front recording a podcast. And I just had somebody that I work with come out. And luckily, they're not, they're not weirded out by me at all. So, basically, um, yeah, so I got that done. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to meditate. Feeling productive. Just getting some odd shit around the house done. And as badly as I don't want to tie my my worth to my ability to make money, um, getting a nice paycheck, nice payday earlier this week and then having a couple of other victories definitely uh, put a spring in my step. And you can say that that kind of contributed to my uh, desire to want to do more this week. But I really can't fall into the trap of letting my worth be tied to my income. Income is super important at this time, but it's it's not. there's, there's more to life than that. And my need for materialism and super expensive shit, you know, is much lower than it used to be. And I really think that's one to grow on. Uh, with regard to how my in flames playlist is churning out right now, I'm pretty much done. I've pretty much listened to every single album with Anders on it, which is like 12 albums. My playlist has about 40 tracks. So roughly, you know, three to four per album. But there's actually two, I think there's actually two albums that have less than three tracks. Um, Horacle, which for old school Inflames Flame, In fans are going to be like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, Horacle, the only song that really stood out to me was episode 666. I know. It's just a coincidence. And then uh, Soundtrack to Your Escape, there were like two tracks. But then there were other albums like Come Clarity. Um, what the fuck else was there? Uh, Come Clarity, Clayman. 
I think even Gesture Race, there were like quite a few albums that I was like four or five tracks, especially come Clarity. Um, and then Siren Charms, which is like their most hated album, sounds amazing. Like In Flames, here's the thing about In Flames. When they go heavy, they go heavy, and they sound really fucking good. Whether they're doing melodic death metal from the 90s, or they're doing like alternative metal from the 2000s and 2010s. When they go heavy, they sound awesome. Like, listen to the song Pacing Death's Trail off of Come Clarity. That's one of their heaviest songs, in my opinion. Or Crawl Through Knives, same album. Super heavy shit and super amazing. But then you, you, you make them go a little bit more melodic and soft. Their alternative metal sound that you hear on Siren Charms... Because first of all, Anders' clean voice sounds awesome. They just, they, it just, it, it really hits the nostalgia for me. And I, I'm, I'm watching an Inflame set list right now, and like the Siren Charm songs sound insane live. So for me to pick a worst in Flames album is kind of an insult, kind of just like with Megadeth or any other bands that I love. But I don't know, man. Siren Charms is a great album, and it seems like a lot of people on YouTube agree with me. So I'll catch you guys on the next clip. Yo, what's up? It's Monday, January 27th, 2020, about a couple minutes before 8 a.m. And oh my god, this month is already flying by! <laughs> oh god, this, uh, you know what? Based on how this year has gone so far, I just had to say, 2030s, that's gonna be my decade. Did I already make that joke? Did I already make that joke? I don't know. Um, no. Once again, welcome to one of my ideal mornings where I wake up at the first alarm. I got up at five. I've decided that since I would prefer to go to the gym during lunchtime to attempt to uh, uh, get that second wind, that I don't need to wake up at four or for or four thirty. If I wake up at five, I still got plenty of time to. Head to my office 30 minutes before my class starts. So yeah, I'm, I'm ahead of schedule right now. And I've already done my reading, I've done my meditating. The only thing I have not done that I would prefer to do in the mornings, early mornings that is, is uh, my stretch. Stretching. Um, but whatever, it's all good. Productive morning, it's all good. Finally figured out a routine with my wife where if I leave early, she doesn't feel like she's hung out to dry. I do my best to be the best husband I can be. Still got a lot of work to do, but ultimately, whether you're a parent of human children or you have other responsibilities such as four animals, you know, you want to do your best to not leave them feeling like they have a bunch of stuff to do. So anytime I leave before she does, I try to make sure the house is as much taken care of as possible. Everything's locked, everything's taken care of, so that way she can basically just finish getting ready in peace. So, that's another ideal morning. Nice, smooth marital affair. Not like affair with another person, but just the the uh, the institution itself in which I'm currently present. <laughs> anyway, so, I just went and bought some some of these horrific Keurig K-Pod cups that were on clearance. It says, uh, what does it say? What's the brand? Donut Shop. And the flavor is vanilla cream pie. And they were on clearance. You know, I had a bunch of cash in my wallet from tips. And my wallet was pretty fat. Had a hard time closing it. Mostly singles. Don't get excited. Um... So I just lightened it up by a couple of dollars. I was like, okay, that's five dollars for twelve cups. I was like, it's like it's like forty it's like forty five cents per cup. <laughs> um So yeah, I got a mild coffee addiction. And even though I wake up to a couple of cups in the morning, I feel the need to have some at my office too. Um it really would be ideal if I cut back. Um but we're, we're taking this shit one at a time. I'm, I shan't be trying to do too many things at once. I need to work on mastering the things that matter. I do have a little bit of a body odor problem at times. And, like, I'm aware of it. Um, I don't know if it's a food allergy thing, a medical thing. Or maybe I drink too much coffee. I don't know what it is. 
Um, but as far as I can tell, most of the time it's stress that uh, triggers it. So, yeah, being in an all commission career uh, really, really, really uh, helps. That uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share this kind of embarrassing but also uh, shameless story because, again, shame isn't an emotion that I feel too often unless I unless I hurt somebody I feel I feel I feel the healthy kind of shame um like remorse or you know feeling like I hurt somebody so I need to make it right like you know there there, there's certain kinds of shame that are okay to feel but then there's other ones they're just kind of stupid like oh I, I set a boundary for somebody today I feel bad like no that's not that's not a healthy type of shame that's a you're a pussy and (laughs) um no, back when I worked at the bank, um, up until I started using this uh, Tide Sport, which I guess if you're athletic or if you're a, a sweaty person or stinky, you go to the gym, because um, I'm definitely not athletic, uh, it's good for that, 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 that kind of clothing. It's good for like the heavier stuff. It, and it, I need to find an alternative for it because it's like, I don't like using name brand shit. And I'd like to think Tide Sport isn't the only thing that exists in that realm. I'd like to find an alternative because Tide Sport itself is uh, a little expensive. So I prefer to use it. But anyway, up until I used that point, my my clothing had a little bit of a lingering uh, post-washing machine smell. To where no matter how much deodorant I put on. Shut up! So fuck yourself. That uh, a smell would still linger, and I guess during one of my weekly reviews with my one of my managers, she's just like, "Yeah, there's a complaint going around that you're uh, that you offend your body odor is blah blah blah," and she seemed kind of like nervous to tell me, and I'm like, "I'm like, look, you can, you can just be direct with me, okay? I can be a little sensitive at times, but for the most part, you can be direct. With, you can be direct with me. It's like, dude." It's like if you have something in your teeth, I'd rather, you know, somebody... I'd rather the person know. I'd rather the person tell me. It's like if I stink, it's like, just tell me. Like, if you don't want to... If you don't want to go down on me because my balls stink, I want to know. I want to get that shit checked out. Or scrub a little harder. You know, hit it with the Brillo pad. No. <laughs> but seriously, though. Um, so, yeah, I've been aware of this for a while. And all of that fucking tangent that I just went off of was from a story about me buying banana cream puff or vanilla cream pie coffee and trying to curb and improve upon certain habits. Let's get back to that real quick as I get situated here. So, long story short, this is the last week of the first month of my 12-week year. Playing catch-up is stupid, um, but basically... Not only do I have a weekly score, but, like, I average them up. I do a monthly score on the spreadsheet. And unless I have a maximum surplus, like, I exceed expectations by a lot on certain tasks. Um, Not the greatest first month. But the fact that I have the numbers in front of me and I have kind of figured out, like, what's important, it it really helps that I'm seeing these things because I'm realizing, oh, shit, if a day is like a week, a week is like a month, and then a month is like a quarter, you know, give or take a little bit, because, um, then yeah, it really shines a light on how effective or ineffective your daily practices are. Now, I can say that my gym attendance has gone up, my usage of Guitar Pro to write music has gone up, and by the way, I went on fuckface.com, fuck, uh, facebook.com, and posted something for the first time in months. Yeah, it had been like October of last year since I'd posted something on the Raptor Riot or the Jay Dennis page. But I basically just told people, I'm like, look, guys, I'm not using social media anymore. Like, it's a fucking joke. If you guys want to stay in the loop of what I'm doing, because I am still active, uh, sub to my YouTube channel and blah, blah, blah. Basically, all I said was, I fucking hate Facebook. The last good social media site for artists or anybody was MySpace. Because MySpace didn't have a stupid algorithm. 
You actually had to work to communicate with people. It wasn't all <laughs> streamlined and algorithms. Like it was, a, it was an actual like experience. And yeah, it was a little addicting, but like it was different. I, I personally thought it was better, but because it didn't appeal to people's short attention spans, and you know, obviously it wasn't the most efficient at times. People like Mark Zuckerberg had to come around and you know dethrone it and basically create the world's worst platform. Um, and then, of course, I also mentioned Instagram before it was bought out by Facebook. Because back before Instagram used the stupid algorithm, too, um, it was better. It was chronological. It was nice. Like, if you follow people, you actually got to saw, see everybody's shit. But I digress. I posted about it. It wasn't like a, a, a goodbye kind of thing. It was just just a quick update because I knew that, at least as of recently, like 15 people randomly decided to like my Raptor Riot page. I'm like, I don't know where you came from. Hopefully these are real pages, real people, but I haven't really shared anything, so okay. But yeah, no, I'm still going to be on YouTube, still going to be podcasting, all that shit, and uh, this week going to be working my tail off not to make up for shit, but just to give me momentum into the next series of weeks. But basically in this first month of my 12 week year on a uh, high note week 4 is going to be the shit I've already meditated woke up on the right foot yesterday was good because I, I start them on Mondays I went to the gym yesterday um, my goal by the end of this week is I'm going to just try it I'm not going to try to rep it but I'm going to just see if I can at least uh, max out at my body weight 185 on the bench and just work towards getting towards uh, repping that 5 times in the next couple weeks so, all while listening to In Flames, working on finishing a new old song, which means it's a song I've written in the past, but, you know, just re- reviving it a little bit, and uh, having a good day.